Hello, this is Sand out here, back with another review. Today we have something very special, a uh, review uh, years in the making, you could say. Now, you may all remember this. This is Transformers Range of the Fallen Bruticus Maximus. This was a figure that was a repaint of the Transformers Energon Bruticus Maximus, and was designed to be more G1 accurate in paint only. Um, now, if you may remember my review that was first uploaded September 16th, 2009, then you'll know that I was very upset about two particular details, that being blast off and swindle. First of all, I thought if they were going to be repaints, they might as well swap the colors, and overall, I found the set to be kind of... I liked the set, and I enjoyed what it was trying to do, but I felt like something really was missing. Especially in the combined mode, which you may remember looked like this. Now, if you know where I'm going with this, well, recently released was the Fans Project Crossfire 02 SP Explorer Musicianer and Combat Unit Appendage Add on Kit. This is a re release of Fans Project's famous Explorer and Munitioner sets that were released a couple years ago. I'm not exactly sure when. And I was unable to afford them at the time. But we are here now, and they did a re release. Now, this re release is originally scheduled to be released in January of this year, but has not been released till April. And they did include a bonus accessory. Now, I do not own the first set, like the original release, like I said. This is a new color set. It's more uh, G1 accurate, more meant to fit the United Bruticus that was released in Asia recently. But I'll be using it with my Revenge of the Fallen Bruticus Maximus. So, without further ado, I will say this slight disclaimer. I only know about the things of the set, of the original version of the set, from secondhand experience through videos. I don't know any of the details from having it in hand. But here we are. Now, you do have this box. It's a new box. It shows you the new colored Explorer ammunition, or Blast Off and Swindle, respectively. This is made by Fans Product, again. Um as we expect. Now it is basically the two boxes of Explorer Munition are kind of combined into one. Um, kind of a thin box, I was really surprised. But you can see it is 02 SP. Um, you can see them on the side. On the back, you got the layout. Um, you have you know, uh, you have all the parts listed up here. You got Explorer and a little bio and Munitioner. Um, and you do have a picture of Colossus with the official Hasbro parts blanked out. Now if you do want to read the bios here, they will be up here for a second and in focus. So if you want to pause it, you can read it. But we got a lot to cover in this set. So without further ado, let's take a look at the Crossfire 02 SP set. So we're going to start with Explorer, also known as Blastoff to you Transformers people. Um, now, this, again, if you do not know about third-party items, I haven't reviewed any, uh, Third-party Transformers items are unofficial licensed uh, accessories, upgrades, and full-on Transformers not licensed by Hasbro. Now, they're not illegal because they're not taking a Hasbro mold and trying to make their own version of it. They are adding to Hasbro's product. And in a lot of cases, it makes the Hasbro product aftermarket prices soar. Now, this is not your mass-produced item. This is not something for... Uh, children of the age of 16. Fans Project recommends this for the ages of 16 and over. Um, I have purchased items from Fans Project before, specifically the City Commander armor, the Protector armor, the G3 trailer, sidearm, and the City Commander add-on set. And I do plan on getting uh, the uh, Function X figures as those come out. And I'm still waiting for them to re-release Chrome Dome. Now, here we have... This is my first... Um, I'm going to call this my first... Third party transformer. Um, I've gotten sidearm doesn't really count. This is a full on figure. Now, in accordance to the design, Blast Off is or Explorer is based on a jet. Now, originally it was an unmanned drone on the first release. Now you have a cockpit. The colors really match the G1 version a lot better with this purplish uh, brown color. You can see as the tail fin. All the details are pretty much there, and it does look very unique. Uh, compared to, say, like Astro Train's uh, train uh, spaceship mode. On the bottom, you can kind of see some robot bits, but overall, not too bad. Um, there's really not much you can do in this mode. It kind of just sits there. 
There is no uh, stand or anything that you can use, but overall, it works in our favor. Now, transformation-wise, because he does transform to robot mode, I'm going to fold these wings up, and going by the instructions, it says to remove this, so put that off to the side. Um, the tricky part down here is his feet. you got to fold his feet up and make sure everything's kind of lined up. Now, unpeg these. They swivel up like that, and his legs have these sliding panels that move up here. I almost forgot about that step. And up here, you gotta you got to kind of unpeg his hands from the top of the cockpit. The cockpit does just fold back. It does kind of hang loose, which would be a minor complaint. But really, Blastoff's individual robot mode is not the reason I bought this set. And last but not least, you open up his chest panel and fold out his head. Now, nothing mold-wise has been changed from the original release of Explorer, just the colors. And I do like the colors. Um, it's enough different that it does count as a separate release in Fans Project, but it is nothing you're missing out on if you are uh, have the original set. Now, there is a lot of, uh, I've heard there's a lot of physical improvements on the set, specifically with the head uh, for Colossus, and the overall joints are a bit tighter, and I'm glad that they do know when they make mistakes. Now, this guy's really kind of neat. He's not tall. He's about the size of a Scout class figure. I'll show him next to his um, his teammates uh, soon. But he's really neat. He's got a ball joint neck, which uh, the other Injunk Miners don't have on any of them. Um, he's got these really nice movement in the shoulders. He's got a bicep that has a double joint type thing. And he's got a wrist swivel um, that is... Nope, he doesn't have a wrist swivel. Never mind. I'm stupid. I'm sorry. These chest panels do move out of the way. Um... He does have a waist swivel, which is nice. Some ball joint hips. Um, he's got a ratcheted knee, which is more so for the Colossus combined mode. And he's got an ankle pivot. So, Fans Product does know how to make ankle pivots for those wondering. Now, as he's trying to do a pose here and failing at it, because my light is out. Whoa, okay, here we go. Um, his dark colors are not showing up very well on camera, from what I can tell. But... Overall, this guy's got a lot of personality, and I really do like it. And he does feel solid, like he's not going to break. Um, but again, he is kind of small, and when they originally sold, I think for like was like 70 a piece, he was a bit pricey. Now, he does have an axe, which was made out of his tail fin, um, the tail fin in the, 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 mo the um, other spaceship mode. Sorry. Sometimes words escape me. And he does have this nice little butcher axe, which looks really nice overall. But in the end, there is Explorer or Blastoff, whichever you prefer. Alright, so the other uh, unique transformation uh, component is Munitioner. Um, Munitioner is based on Swindle from G1, and the color is a more yellow than uh, stark tan that the original release had. Now, he has a nice little Humvee. Um, looks overall really convincing. This is the, probably the newest uh, paint app, is these black and yellow stripes on the back. And I think it adds a bit more flavor and color to the figure. Um, now, if you ignore my mistransformation, you can see on the bottom, yeah, there's robot bits. But overall, really nice. Um, definitely something cool. The uh, gun on top does rotate and does come off if you wish. So you got that, and you got a couple pegs on the front, which is for transformation. So not much you can do about it. He does roll pretty nicely, um, and he does feel really solid. Transformation-wise, again, really simple, just like uh, Explorers was. It's not anything groundbreaking, but it's not anything too complicated. Um, all you gotta do is uh, split this area here, and this part will split up into his legs, which you can see folds out like that, and his backpack just folds back and hangs out there, much like Explorer. Um, my only real complaint with those guys is the the back kibble. Um, we'll give him his gun right now, because he really needs it. And last but not least, fold down the chest piece, flip out the head. It's a nice transformation step, step 
that is shared between the two. And there you got Munitioner. Um, or if you want to call him Swindle, call him Swindle. You can call him whatever you want. If you if you buy the toy, eh, that gives you full rights to call him what you want. I'm personally going to call him Swindle. Um, oh, there's one last step that I do forget about. It's that you got to collapse that in. Um, so there you go. There is Munitioner. Again, a really neat little figure. Uh, the head sculpt is nice. He looks like Swindle um, that he is referencing. Um, the paint details, again, more vibrant colors, but I really do like it. I thought that the original um, Munitioner and Explorer had uh, kind of subdued colors, and I think that they're more vibrant now, and it's really nice. Um, so anyways, really cool. Sticulation is very similar to Explorer's. He's got a ball joint neck, ball joint shoulders, that double joint kind of elbow, uh, no wrist swivel, hip swivel, uh, hip ball joint, knee, again, a bit of a ratchet, and a waist joint. So, very neat overall, and I must say that if the combined mode of these guys was not so um, awesome, we'll get to that, then I definitely would be posing this guy um, on his own. He's really, really neat. Uh, I do, I think I, I probably enjoy uh, Unitioner more. Um, he does feel a bit more stable. But yeah, really cool overall. Now, what about the other Combaticons? Alright, so the other Combaticons uh, don't have much weaponry anymore. Once you take away their translucent bits, uh, let's see if we can armor them up with a few pieces. This is where all the upgrade stuff comes from. As I did mention on the boxes, an upgrade plus Explorer Munitioner. First of all, you got this. That's for Onslaught. This is for Onslaught. That's for Onslaught. That's for Onslaught. And that's for Onslaught. That's going to chill out over here. While we work on the two smaller, well, that's also for Onslaught, <coughs> Vortex and Brawl. Now, Brawl probably has the simplest of the all the upgrades, which, uh, again, these upgrades kind of mix around between these three, between uh, Robot and Vehicle. But on Vehicle Mode, Brawl does get a couple extra guns that do their job in making him more fortified and looks really nice overall. Vortex, on the other hand, keep wanting to call him Whirl, stupid last day of the records, um, has a bit more involved. You have these two guns that peg on either side of his arms down here. And then you got these things. Now, these are missile packs, which, in theory, are a good idea. You know, they just kind of peg on... They peg on there. Like the, Okay, so the instructions say put them in... The instructions say put them there. They have no pegging ability, um, so minor downside, what you gotta do is kinda wedge the legs on here, and then it still doesn't really work. So, yeah. And through the power of editing and three hours of fiddling, that's what it's supposed to look like. Great idea. Those are literally being held with uh, friction and gravity not wanting to be a bitch to me today. Thanks, gravity. So that's basically Brawl and Vortex's upgrades. Not too exciting, but does get the job done of carrying the parts around. Now remember all those parts that pushed off to the side? Well, it's time for this now. First off, we're going to do some... The only piece of modification. Um, Transformation-wise, we just need to open... I'm going to get this done now. Just pretty much fold out his legs and do this. Now... As you saw, he was a missile tank, instead of a flat-bedded truck with a giant missile launcher on top. Now, there are a few things we need to do. First off, we need to get in here. Now, this is the old head. Um, as you see, and it was my problems was that it kept falling off. Now, on the original Crossfire set, you had to unscrew this head and put in the new one. Thanks to fans Project Learning, that was kind of a bad move. We get the new head, which again, we'll look in detail later. And once you get it in here, it's staying for life. Now, it's got a ball joint on it, which I'm not sure about the original. Again, never owning it. Now, you got to notice that you got to be very careful when you're transforming this guy with the new head, as those antenna need to fit right in his hand holes. Um, and if they don't, then you're going to bend something. So, anyways, that's done. Now, 
all these parts are, of course, for the combined mode. Those are obviously feet, but it does add to give Onslaught a more proper vehicle mode that is representative of his name. So we can just plug these on here and just take this, plug this cannon. How does this go on? Like that. And flip this piece around and this clicks in right on there. And now you've got the onslaught that we have wanted ever since he came out. So thank you, Fans Project. Uh, this turret does rotate. These turrets do move. And overall, it looks pretty good. Uh, you got a blast shield up here. You got missile racks. And it does serve some transportation purposes. A good example of transportation is he can carry blast off now. And there's enough space for it. It works. It's really clever how Fans Project took the you know, combiner kibble that they had to make and managed to give us something we always wanted with this mold. Now, that's not all that Onslaught can do with his shiny new pieces. That's not all Blastoff can do in conjunction with Onslaught. Now, let's remove all these pieces again. And this piece, which is really stuck in there, like that. And this piece can come off as well. And once we do this, we need to close these ports back up. Now, these pieces split in half and peg onto either side. And we have this piece opening up and rotating around. We have this piece just kind of resting in here somehow. I don't, I'm not even sure the instructions sometimes aren't helpful. And these kind of just chill off to the side. And now we've got a kind of sort of launching pad for blast off. Um, it's referencing the fact that each of oh well that makes sense. If you weren't an idiot like me. Uh, you would realize that this is how you're supposed to put this right here. You're supposed to let him sit on top. There we go. So you get that. And basically now you have a shuttle launch pad, which is a nice reference to the original G1 toy. And I kind of screwed this all up. These are supposed to be on the other side. Point is, this doesn't really matter. But, there are ways to display things. And there are all five Combaticons, all armored up and ready for battle. Yes, Vortex's missile pods are not there. I know I'm the one doing the video. You don't need to tell me. Anyways, um, that's not all these extra parts do. We have some robot modes to get to. Now, if you do want to see the transformations for Onslaught, Brawl, and Vortex, go see my review that I posted like four years ago. Okay, three years ago. That's three or four? Mm, that's four now. Wow. I've been doing this a long time. Anyways, without further ado, let's just transition quickly to Onslaught, Brawl, and Vortex into robot mode. So, let's start the upgrades. Now, just like in vehicle mode, the robots get upgrades. Now, they're not necessarily the same pieces. They all kind of shuffle around. Again, we're going to start with Vortex. Now, Vortex has those missile pods again. Remember how much I liked them the first time? I love them a lot more this time. Um, having the panels flip open allow for actual connections. Thank you, fans project. Now once you got those in place, some pretty kick-ass shoulder pads. And you will give him two guns. For example, this one, which has these moving turrets for whatever reason, um, will fit in... Th that's the wrong one. This one will fit in his hand here. Like so. And where's the other gun he gets? Now he gets one of these. Not one of those. One of these. So he gets one of those. So that's done. 
and his blades are falling off, just like I complained about multiple times in the original video. So, there you go. Next brawl gets the simplest upgrades. One of those. And uh, one of these. It's like I was saying, parts don't always stick with the robot they came with. Um, back to Onslaught in a second here. The uh, backpack has got issues because of the new larger head. Take Onslaught here. And you give him some awesome shoulder pads, just like Vortex got. Now, while Vortex had weapons you can see, there's some hidden ones in Onslaught. So that's good. He's not getting left out. And... There you have... Oh, there you have falling parts, thanks gravity. Um, gravity and Murphy's Law works against me in review. And take the gun here, which needs to be rotated around, and can be handled, because <laughs> there's a handle, get it? Like that. And get that shoulder pad in place. And this is failing horribly, because I forgot to bend the elbow, and kind of do that motion. So there's Onslaught, Brawl, and Vortex, leaving two guns here. Um, so not bad overall, and uh, let, let's bring in Explorer and, and uh, Munitioner. So, armored up and brought together, let's bring the Combaticons together. Without further ado, let us begin the ultimate transformation combination of Colossus. Alright, we're starting with good old Explorer. What you want to do is make sure this peg is flipped out in the bottom, and you want to get his legs all straightened up, and pegging them together is easier said than done. But once it is done, you do have the effect given. Flip his head away, pretty much converting him back into vehicle mode without folding down the back panels or the wings. Well, once you get all this aligned, bring this down and fold those out. Now next step you want to do is fold or rotate this thusly. Next thing you want to take the which hand do we want? We want the right hand. So you're going to take this one. You notice that it has a right hand in it. Put that off to the side. So we'll just plug that right there on that peg. And next we'll take to find the missile rack with these on it, um, and then that just lines up and goes in place there. Fold the peg out, and now you've got Explorer's arm mode. For consistency, we're going to go with Munitioner next, um, basically folding him back into vehicle mode. Um, actually, you are folding him back into vehicle mode with one minor difference. Um, and I say fold back into vehicle mode instead of transform, because he really just kind of folds together. Um, everything kind of goes on top of itself. But you get this going on, bring that down, and fold his leg in. Pull that piece out, fold his leg in, like this, pull the piece out, and then the minor difference, oh yeah, get the gun back in there. It needs to stay in there. My difference is you got to fold this uh, Energon port out and take which foot is this? This one. Take the foot with the holes in it and plug that on. And now you've got a leg. Next up is Vortex. Now Vortex, you got to fold his. Um, we're going to move the. We're going to remove the blades for now. Um, it's just going to cause. Okay, we'll remove one blade for now. And then with the other one. Thanks, gravity. So you want to get these arms folded up in here, um, out of the way. Get the waist turned this way, get the legs turned this way. Making sure I'm doing this right, because I don't want to show you guys bad instructions. So you get that going on. Um, we'll attach the blades back in a second. Then you want to take that piece, the empty shell. You want to get the other hand out. Um, you want to plug these two pods together plug the hand into that, 
and that slips right down those grooves on his legs. Um, so you get a nice solid arm connection. We'll get those, uh, we'll get the blades reattached now. Now you can either have them splayed open like this, or you can have them collapsed up like this, um, whichever you prefer. Um, and the last piece is a bit more complicated than um, Explorer's uh, piece. You want to fold both panels out. You want to hook one here, fold it around, and hook one there. Now, you encountered one of my only complaints of this whole thing is the arm kind of falls off. So there's the other arm. Much like you Munitioner, um, Brawl transforms back into vehicle mode with absolutely no differences this time. Um, I'm just showing it for consistency's sake. Again, I like showing detail. I am a detail kind of person. And so you got to just kind of fold him up. Again, a lot of folding more than transforming. Um, still impressive. All right, so you fold him up, and you take... Make sure that's all aligned. Take his other f bump the camera because you're stupid. Um, take his other foot, and there's his other leg. Our final component is the torso. This can be a bit complicated, so follow my steps. You're doing mostly the same as what you'd normally do, except when you originally turn the waist around, you leave it like this and fold the legs around. Folding open the gates to get the pegs revealed like that. Again, stuff you may have seen in my previous video. But once you get that up there, which has always been kind of a tight joint, fold that in. So next part, you want to fold up the new head, bring the torso piece around, bring up the arms like this. Uh, the arms will line up. The pegs should fit. You want to make sure the arms get folded back down. and They actually do peg into place, uh, surprisingly. Once you get them at the right angle, go in like that, bring that down, and you want to leave these panels kind of um, open uh, more towards the front, especially when we get farther in. All right, so now you get the basic torso that we've seen before. All right, now what are the additions? Well, first of all, new heads in place. You want to take the pelvis piece. Um, it's going to peg in through uh, two two pegs down here, like that, and those panels are meant to move. This piece is a bit more complicated. You want to spread it open like you did for uh, his base mode, which can be a bit difficult, and you want to peg that into the two pegs on his back, like that, so you got those up there. Um, the torso is getting quite big, and I believe that is all. And there's the torso. We're going to assemble the weapons now. You want to take one of these guns, which will have the fold-out handle here, and one of these guns, which you need to fold up a peg. Those will stick together. There's actually four guns that make two guns. You want to take the rifle, fold this out, and fold that down. And you want to take the axe and make it a knife. And now to combine them, first you take in Brawl. We're starting with Brawl, why? Because I decided I like the color green today. Peg that in place. Bring in Swindle, peg him into place. And now you've got a really tall robot. All right, from here, you wanna come over here, grab a Blast Off or Explorer, pegging him in, oh. Well, it's not every day that you have you know, a crotch piece fly off of a transformer. And I mean fly, that went quite the distance. And then, finally, take Vortex, pegging him on there. And now you have the completed, awesome Colossus, also known as Bruticus. And there he is, in all his magnificent glory. This is what you spent a total of $180 retail cost for, and oh good god, it's amazing. I am so impressed with this. After the years of anticipation of finally owning the set, and then the months of waiting for it to finally come out, 
I don't care about the paint. With Bruticus complete, what next, you might ask? Well, let's arm this guy up first. Before we get into... Well, dude, not doing this live, so I can't ask the audience questions and hope for an answer quickly. Um, but he does have quite a few armaments that we will go over here shortly. Let's look at the articulation. Now, if you remember the Bruticus review from four years ago that I keep referencing... Articulation wasn't that great. Not much you can do with it because, well, he had no hand or foot articulation. Well, this guy kind of fixes all those problems. First of all, the head is on a beautiful ball joint. You can look, he looks far down, he looks far up. He can look kind of confused. It's really good. Also, I remember uh, reading that these antenna were kind of rubbery on the original. They are not, they are solid plastic. Um, again, I don't know how much of that is true, but you do have 360 shoulders, like always, um, a bit restricted because of that, still wish those arms would stay in place, the shoulders move outward, um, they rotate here, they bend at the elbow at two points on both sides, you also get a wrist swivel, and you get a thumb movement, a three, two joints in each finger, so you have all that going on. You can do a Mecha Godzilla thing with his gun fingers. Um, same on this side with a ratchet elbow instead because of the added ratchet joints. His waist, it turns. It works about as well as it originally did. His legs move out. They move forward. These pieces move with him. He has knee rotation. Rotation and bends. This rotates as well. The ankle does pivot. Um, in fact, it does not move forward and back, but it does have an ankle tilt. So he can get into all kinds of poses, especially when you bring the cannons down. <laughs> yes, I love how there's articulation in the cannons, so they can come down on his shoulders, and he can just destroy things. So, And if you didn't like the fact that Bruticus originally had, um, you know... His cannon's always sticking up. You can do that, which is fun. And they're individual, too. So, articulation's out of the way. Let's uh, move on. This does have an extra joint right here, by the way. He does have quite a few armaments. Um, namely, he has a rifle, which is huge, by the way. It's about half his height. You get a pair of shotguns, which looks really cool, and they can actually, um, you can peg them in here. Anyways, point is, these load up here quite nicely, though it does have a problem with the backpack collapsing and therefore falling off because you've undone the pegs. Alright, fair enough. Now, you have uh, a moving set. Get the knife, which you know that that is a knife, um, which folds up and nicely pegs in on his arm, so it can tuck away. Um, and there you go. Now, all that said and done, there's no place to put the rifle. It's okay though because it's probably the first weapon he's gonna ditch in battle because it's pretty good for long range, not really close range. Anyways, um, you can take his hand here. You'll notice on the inside there's a peg, or you won't see it. There's a slot on each weapon, and you just got to pose his fingers accordingly. I would get the trigger finger in there before anything else. As long as that's lined up, you have his awesome assault rifle, which looks freaking awesome. Now, he's not going to be in many sniper poses, I imagine, for most people. Well, because it's nearly impossible. Um, the only complaint is that the weapons do not stay in there. They stay in there as well as Masterpiece weapons stay in the hands of Masterpiece figures. And we all know. We all know how well that works. And if you don't know, not very well. Not very well indeed. So you got that going on. Um, he can pose with this hand. Assault rifle, I find cool. I find it cool about how big it is. I don't find it cool at anything else it does. So, we're going to move on. 
So, yeah, he's done with his uh, long-range sniping. Let's get some closer range stuff. Namely, let's get his shotguns out. He's got two of them. Why two of them? Because, holy crap, why would you just have one when you can have two? He's got two hands, so you can get him loaded up and ready to blow things sky high. And once you get all his fingers in place, that looks pretty friggin' cool. So, you got that going on. And again, he's huge, and that's why he doesn't fit quite in the camera frame. But now you get him with a couple of assault, like, shotguns things. I'm calling them shotguns. I'm sure I'm getting this wrong. I'm not good with gun names. I think when robots like this, which really look like a combat unit, being formed up and using these weapons works really well. And it is pretty freaking badass. But I do not know gun names. I just have the basic generalizations and information I have learned from TV crime dramas. So, what do I think of this? If it wasn't obvious, holy crap do you get a lot for $130. That is the retail price. It's the price I paid for it at BigBadToyStore.com for Explorer and Munitioner together. It was $130. Well, it seems like a lot when you think about it. Limited run item, third party, it's not bad. You're getting two full Transformers plus all the pieces to make this beauty thing. And beauty thing. My words are slurring together because its awesomeness is overwhelming. I just kicked the, de I just kicked the desk here. It shook and didn't fall over. I have high, gr uh, high, I have figure arts that are made by a company that says they excel in making awesome figures. Well, they fall over a lot easier than this guy. This is a solid, sturdy figure. Now, when it comes down to recommendations, how do I recommend this? If you got the Bruticus set and you want this that you see in front of you, by all means, get the set as soon as you can. Um, if you love Bruticus and you want to make Bruticus this awesome, then get this set as soon as you can. Um, they'll be in stock for a while, I'm sure. But do plan if you want to get this set. If you like what you see here and you already have the Bruticus set, then go for it. If you got the United Bruticus, it'll look a bit different, but you're basically getting what you see here. If you don't have the Bruticus set and just like, oh, I like Swindle and Blastoff, maybe I should get them. They're not worth $130 alone. It's the combo package making Bruticus that really makes them worth it in the end. Um, there are cheaper alternatives. If you want the molds for Swindle and Blastoff, uh, the Causality line released by Fans Project had uh, two repaints, uh, Flame Blast and Roar Warcry. So you do have the option for that if you wish. But in the end, this is a set you're getting for the complete package. Now, I paid about $180 in total for what you see here because I bought Bruticus when he came out for 50 bucks at Target. This Bruticus does not go for that cheap anymore. So you are looking at two to $300 in the end. Still making it cheaper than most third-party combiners because, well, half of it's uh, Hasbro creation. So, taking that in mind, I will show you one last thing that is included with this set. And, uh, some of you forget, think I forgot. As a bonus, they said there was going to be a bonus accessory when they originally announced the set. And they said that there was going to be a delay on the set. And when they announced the delay, they decided to show it off. So next we'll take a look at Quake, a little bonus gift. Now, there's not much to Quake, so I'm going to cover him in a minute or so here. But here's his packaging. He's a Shockwave Target Master. He's meant to look like Shockwave, turns into a gun. Not a show-accurate gun, and some people don't like it, but hey, it's a free gift. I wouldn't complain. It's basically, he's packed in this little bag, and here he is. This is his gun mode. It doesn't look very G1 Shockwave-y, but I like it. It's a nice, futuristic take. Now, why is he included? Well, there was one episode of G1, namely, I think it was Bruticus's Revenge or something close to that title, um, where Bruticus went to 
Cybertron to take over Cybertron, and Shockwave had his forces there, and Shockwave was fighting Bruticus, and Bruticus picks up Shockwave's gun mode and starts firing on his troops in one of my favorite scenes from G1. Fans probably apparently like that scene as well, so now we have a Shockwave Target Master. Transformation simple enough. Uh, you fold this back, you flip his arm up, bring it down, you extend this out for the tiny, tiny fist, which actually, there's a second one included um, it with mine. I don't know if that's with all of them, but I've noticed that if you don't have this fist turned around when you transform it, it goes flying. But you can see the transformation is simple enough, and it accomplishes a great-looking shockwave. Like, honestly, as a free gift, holy crap. I say it's a free gift because the... This Crossfire 02 SP set is less than the original cost of um, of the Explorer and Munition. But there you go. Look at this shockwave. He's very expressive. He's got a ball joint neck. He's got ball joint shoulders, ball joint elbows. Um, he's got his gun arm. He's got his ball joints here, here. He's got a rotation. He's got a rotation the the th the leg. Bend at the knee. He's really expressive. I really like this guy. I probably won't have I probably have him displayed like this on my desk most of the time because he looks really really neat, um, and I like him a lot. I can honestly say I like him more than War for Cybertron Shockwave, which is the closest thing to a classic Shockwave we've gotten right now. Don't have Transformers Prime Shockwave yet, thanks New Mexico stores not stocking things. But anyways, there is Quake. Um, why they called him Quake? I had Shockwave, Quake, um, they, Quake Wave was already taken by fans' toys. Um, but yes, like I said, he is a target master for Colossus, or Bruticus, whichever you want. I'm gonna go with Bruticus, because that's what I grew up with. And turning him back into gun mode. Yeah, I'm not gonna cut away for this, it's not hard. Um, see, that kind of brings this around, and brings... The handle likes to pop off, I will say that's a one complaint. But again, free gift, don't really care about minor things like that, especially how small he is. So you get him all set up here, and there is Bruticus holding Shockwave, and his arm is drooping, and it just fell out of his hand. Thanks, Murphy's Law. But as you can see, it works, it really does. Uh, the gun mode could be a bit better. Um, it is it does feel kind of uh, fragile, but again, free bonus gift, an accessory that the original did not come with, and I do like it, and I hope that like Fans Product will release Quake to the public, maybe in an alternate paint scheme, because I think the people that bought the original set should have a chance to get the new Quake. Um, but if they don't, I'm glad to have it regardless. And I was already sold on this purchase before they announced Quake. Also, there's your knife in Bruticus's hand. You're welcome. It also took me 20 minutes to get to stay there, but you're welcome. So yeah, really nice bonus gift overall. So, the package of Explorer, Munitioner, the Combat Unit Appendage Add-on Kit. And Quake, for 130 bucks is a total winner. If you got the Bruticus, if you got the Bruticus parts, if you got the parts to upgrade, if you have the money, definitely go for it. I know as the recording of this video, Big Bad Toy Store still has Quakes with their uh, Crossfire Zero Two SP sets, and I would definitely recommend picking it up. So stay tuned for more, as I do have some more third-party items on pre-order whenever they decide to come out. Delays have been a problem lately, and. Be sure to stay tuned for more from Transformers reviews. Um, I'm definitely, definitely interested in um, in doing some more Transformers reviews. Again, mostly third-party stuff and perhaps the upcoming generations. I was going to review Generations Grimlock and Blaster. If you want my quick review of those, they're neat. I think Blaster's cooler than Grimlock. Grimlock has issues, but overall, they're worth it. Oh, by the way, this guy's huge. Here he is next to Ultra Magnus. Like, City Commander decked out Ultra Magnus. And this is like an ultra-sized figure. Freaking awesome. He's the biggest figure in my Classics collection so far. That's going to be different starting with Metroplex. And before that, Predaking.
thanks to Mastermind Creations. Um, but overall, really cool. So, without further ado, be sure to check out Hirotaku.com for Transformers news and more. And until next time, saying goodbye.